Hello Math 9 students, welcome to another one of our technology integration pieces. Today we're going to be looking at uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheets, but what we learn here can also be applied to Google Sheets and likely any other spreadsheet program that you use. Now, um, some of you may not have Microsoft Excel on your computer right now, but because you have a student account with Saskatoon Public Schools, you get free access to all of the Microsoft programs and all you have to do is go to the link that's up here in the Excel spreadsheet section. It's in, I've got it in unit five because that's where we are right now. And there's a link here to office365.com. If you go there and you sign in, you should get prompted to put in an email address. So you'd put in your school email address. And then when you log into your Microsoft account, um, It'll give you an option over here to download or use online any of the products. The one we're looking for is Excel Spreadsheets. So it's the uh, it's the green one with the X on it. Um, I just want to say something about this email here. Um, students, you have email um, accounts and you also have logins. So uh, I want you to try your student number at spsd.sk.ca first. And I think that'll work. But if it doesn't work, I want you to try your actual student email address, which is your student number at spsstudent, uh, sorry, uh, student number at sps-student.sk.ca. So um, <clears throat> try it first like this, and then if that doesn't work, try at sps-student.sk.ca. One or, one or two of those will work and get you into the Microsoft website where you can either use Excel online or you can download it and actually run the program from your computer. Underneath that, we've got some uh, instructions and some files to go along with them. So the first thing I'm doing with this uh, today's video, well, I guess they're all today's video, but <clears throat> this will be the first video today, is I'm going to show you how to import some statistics into uh, Excel, and then we're going to play around with them in there. So the first thing I need you to do is I need you to click on this link right here. Now, you could just download it, but if you click on it, it brings up a whole mess of uh, Major League Baseball statistics. I just copied a, a sheet from the Major League Baseball website. And what you can do with this particular page is I want you to right click and go to Save As. And then Save As. You can call it whatever you want, but make sure it says .txt at the end. So let's just call it uh, Excel Stats or something like that. And save it into your documents or somewhere else where you can access it. And I think there's another option here that if you click on this, you should be able to download the file. So one way or another, make sure you get those, uh, make sure you get those uh, statistics in a format that's .txt. It's short for text file. And what we're going to do is we're going to import these statistics into Microsoft Excel. And then we'll uh, teach a little bit more about what spreadsheets are and how we can use them to make our lives easier in mathematics. So I've got this copy uh, of these statistics. So I'm going to open up my version of Excel and I'm just going to go to start a blank workbook and I'll maximize it and this is what spreadsheets look like um, whether you're using Google Sheets or you're using Microsoft Excel or other it uh, you know it's got the same sort of layout that Microsoft Word has you've got all these tools up here in the toolbar and you've got different ribbons for different things and we'll use some of these but certainly not all of them spreadsheets are basically just a huge table and it's usually used for keeping track of data. So for instance, um, let's say that you wanted to keep track of student first name, student last name, what class you're taking in Quint 1, Quint 2, Quint 3, Quint 4, etc. And then you can have a whole bunch of students on one sheet and you can have data for all those students, including what classes they take and what marks they get and things like that. It's just a really handy program for organizing information. And luckily for our math class, we can use it to automate a lot of mathematic features that we would otherwise have to compute by hand or we're using a calculator or something. So I find myself using Excel a lot in my day to day and just about any entry level job that you're going to take with a company in an office or, uh, you know, somewhere where you're working with computers, they're going to expect that you have basic skills in word processing and spreadsheets for sure. So uh, spreadsheets are organized into rows and columns. So the rows go down the left side here and you see they're numbered and they go all the way down to I think 64,000 something or other and you can add more if you need to. And then the columns are alphabetical. So A, B, C and then once you get to Z, if I just keep scrolling over here and I get to Z, 
it just starts again this time with A, 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 B, A, C, A, D, and so on. So the way that you refer to each one of these little boxes is that they're called cells. So each row and each column intersect to make a cell. So that's how you identify where you are in a spreadsheet. For instance, right now I am in the C column and the third row. So you would refer to this cell as C3. And if you notice up here, it shows you what cell you're in right now. And you can also use this box to go anywhere you want. So let's say if I just wanted to quickly go to cell D100, I could just type in D100, hit enter, and then it takes me all the way down to D100. So you can get where you want to go uh, in a spreadsheet very quickly instead of having to scroll and find stuff. If you know which cell you need to go to, you can just type it up there and it's, it's pretty handy. Um, what you type in a cell also appears on this line right here, but we don't always put text in a cell. Sometimes we put things like dates or, or dollar figures or things like that. So this is always exactly what you type into the cell. And you can type it in up here or you can type it in down here. But if you put in um, certain formats, it'll look different down here in the spreadsheet than it will in the box up here. So I'll give you an example of that. Um, let's say I type in, um, today's date is November uh, well, 1 right now, uh, 2020. And so you'll notice that the date whoops, looks different now okay, in the formula bar than it does down here. And it's just because I've got a, a different number format on. You could change your number formats up here. So if, if I know that this is supposed to be a date, but I don't want it to look like this, I want it to say maybe November comma 1, 2020, you can go down to uh, date. There's short date, and there's long date. So if I put in the long date, now it puts in the whole of September. But you'll notice up here, it's still just got the 11 slash 1 slash 2020. And down here, it shows something different. It's the same cell, and these things mean the same thing. But how you display them down here is kind of up to you. For instance, I'll go back up to that, um, to the uh, number format box here. And if I go down to custom or more number formats, there's a whole bunch of them in here. And I'm just in the date section right now. And you can see all the different ways that you can display a date. So let's say I wanted to display it with month, day, comma, and then year. So if I pick that one, now it says November 1, 2020. Okay, so just, just so you're aware, of, um, you know, you can type in up here or you can type in the cell, but it may not look the same down here as it does up in that little bar up there. All right, the first thing we're gonna do as I introduce you to how to format and work with spreadsheets is we are gonna import that data I talked about before. So we've just got a blank spreadsheet right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to file, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, now I'm going to go to um, oh, it's not quite right, actually. Go to insert data. There we go. So I'm going to the data tab. And in the data tab, I'm going to go to this one over here. You could either go to get data or you could go to the one that says from text slash CSV. So we've got a text file, so I'm going to pick that one. And then it's going to ask me, where do you want to get this the data that you're going to put inside your spreadsheet? Where are you going to get it? And I saved it to the documents folder. So if I go down to my documents folder, I'll see that Excel stats.txt file. I'll click on it and I'll say import. And before it imports, it's going to ask me a few more questions. So it's going to say, this is the data that we think you want. And this is how we think you want it formatted. We think you want the first row to be all the header columns. And um, you're, you're going to want the rest of the rows to be all these players. So. This is just this is just a baseball, uh, the entire league. So baseball players are on this list. Every baseball player in the league, they've got a first name, they've got a last name, they've got a team, that's a position. And these are just baseball statistics, at-bats, runs, hits, singles. You don't have to be uh, to understand baseball to, to work with this spreadsheet. Um, I just wanted to give you an idea that these are sort of the numbers that they have, and this identifies them by name and by team. So it's just a bunch of data. And what I've got here, it looks like it's pretty well set up for the way that I want it to come into my spreadsheet. The delimiter up here is when you look at the data that we started with, how does it separate the, the name Paul from the last name Goldschmidt? And then how does it separate that from the Arizona and that from the position and things like that? Well, if you look at the original data that we have, if I can go back to it here, but if you look at the original data we have, you'll notice that there's spaces between all of these. 
That's actually from the tab key. So when somebody was making this data in the first place, they hit tab to separate all of the columns. And Excel can pick up on that and they can take this wealth of data and recognize that everywhere there's a gap like this, it means it's supposed to be the next column over. So when we imported that data, it said, I think you wanna separate all this data by tabs, which means every time I see a tab, I'm gonna bring it over to the next column. And that's how we're gonna separate this out. Sometimes people separate things by commas. Now, if I said that this is separated by com commas, okay, it's not gonna look the way I want it to look because there are no commas in the original data. If I go back to the original data, okay, you see there's no commas. There's just these tab spaces. Sometimes spreadsheets are organized so that it would be Paul and then comma, and then his last name Goldschmidt, and then comma, Arizona, comma, 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 so that all the data is separated by commas. So if that was the case, you'd have to pick a comma for your delimiter. But as we've said already, these data or this data is separated by a tab. So that's the one I'm gonna pick on my list here. And this data looks good to me. So what I can do then is I can load this into my spreadsheet. Might take a second, Let's get in the data. There we go. So we've got our data and you can ignore this little box over here. And it actually put it into a kind of a nice little form for us too. here. It put us into a, um, you can change the way that your, your data looks. Should have some table styles up here. So it, it kind of just picked one, I think, randomly that it, that it thought would look good. All right, so we've got a bunch of data here that we can play with now. By the way, if you had any trouble, um, if you had any trouble importing any of this data or if you're working with Google Sheets and it's not the exact same process, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go save a copy of this and I'll just save it in my mouth. Documents, and I'll just call this uh, Excel Stats. And if if I'll, I'll post this on the website as well. So if you have trouble bringing in that text data and importing it the way that I showed you here, because you're using a different program or you don't have access to Excel, you can just get this file, and it should look the same. So I'll have this file up there if you have any trouble with the import process. So we've got a bunch of data and we've got uh, many, many rows. I don't know how many rows. We'll scroll down right to the bottom here. Many rows. We've got uh, almost 3,000 players. So that's a lot of data. 3,000 people and all of these statistics and numbers for each of these people. It's a lot of data to keep track of. And, and that's why we use, that's why we use spreadsheets because it'll help us make sense of this data and we can do calculations on this data a lot easier than if we were to just put this in a Word document or a table or you know write it down by hand. By putting it in Excel, we open up a lot of opportunities for ourselves. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna kind of shift my focus over to this right here where it says uh, assignment uh, one in Excel. This is the assignment that I'm gonna want you to complete after we're done this sort of introductory lesson. It's called formatting in Excel. So that's all I'm gonna focus on for the first um, for the first video. So if you want to be sort of looking at this assignment and building it as we go, that's fine. Or if you just wanna keep open the, the file that we're working with and, uh, and, and work with me on this, that's fine as well. Okay, so let's just start with uh, with formatting on a spreadsheet. We can make our text look differently in a very similar way that we do it in Microsoft Word. So if we're in the home menu, we've got all these formatting tools right here. And I don't think that these are gonna scare most people because they're very similar to what you would see in Microsoft Word. And what that means is we can select a piece of data. For instance, I'll select from column B4, the last name Rizzo, and I can make it bold just by clicking on that. I can make it bigger by clicking here and changing the size of the letters. I can change the color of it. So these are all things that we can do um, and have probably done using Microsoft Word before. So just to let you know that, it's still, that it still um, retains all that functionality from Microsoft Word. So if you wanna make uh, words look different and highlight them or change color or whatnot, you can do all of that thing, all of those things. Also, you can select a lot of data at once and make changes to it. So for instance, Let's say I just randomly took this section of data. 
I'm just clicking on one cell and without letting go of the mouse button, I'm dragging and then surrounding all of the data that I want. And then when I let go of the mouse button, you see that it's selected. It looks different, right? So I'm just going to click, drag, and then let go of the mouse. And then I've surrounded this set of data. Well, whatever you've got surrounded in this light gray, whatever you do up here is going to apply to all of it. So if I wanted to bold all of these numbers and make them bigger, I can just hit the bold button and I can make them bigger. And you see how it only applied to the things we had selected. <clears throat> if you ever want to go backwards in Microsoft or just about any program, if you hit control and then keeping your finger on the control key, if you tap Z, it'll go back one step at a time. And if you hit control and then Y, it'll go forward one step at a time. So, I, you know, control Z is the great I, I, I messed up button. Okay, if you did something, I accidentally deleted a whole bunch of data. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, hit control Z, it comes back. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of the great uh, oops button. You can, you can get your data back. So by surrounding data, you can change, and it, it would work the exact same way if you did it with the, uh, with the words, right? It doesn't matter if it's numbers or words. You can change whatever you've got surrounded. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, and, and um, you can also do it to the entire spreadsheet, or you can do it to an entire row or entire column. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's say, for instance, we want to make this entire row. Number four, we want to make it all bold and red. Well, I could click and drag over and get to the end and then do what I want up here. But let's say that this, instead of being just up to T, let's say this was 100 columns wide. Well, I'd have, to, I'd have to do this for a long time in order to surround all the data. So the easy way of selecting all the data in a row is you just go over here to where the numbers are and you click on the number right in the middle. So if I click on the number right in the middle, you'll notice that row 5 has been selected and it goes all the way out past the end of my data. As long as you've got a row selected, then you can just make your changes and it will only apply to that row. So there we go. I made it a little bigger and I made it bolder. And you can select multiple rows that way as well. So if I wanted to bold the first uh, eight rows, I'm just going to click in the middle of the two. Okay, make sure you're not clicking in the box. You're, you're right here out on the row section. So I'm going to click. I'm going to hold down the mouse button, drag down to number eight, let go. And now all of these rows are selected. So anything that I do after that is going to apply to those rows that I had selected. The exact same thing goes for columns. If I want to do something to multiple columns, all I do is I go up to the middle of the letter, not this row, but the letter, click, drag, and then it'll select all of those columns all the way down to the bottom. Now this is a good instance where you should use this because we got 3,000 row or 3,000 rows of data. So just by clicking and dragging up here, I can select it all the way down to the 3,000th player. Whereas if I tried to do it manually, I have to do this for a really long time and it's really annoying. Okay. So I'll just demonstrate that back up at the top again. Let's say I wanted to bold and change the color of column B and column C. I'm going to click on B, hold the mouse button, drag over, let go. Now I have B and C selected. And then I think I said I wanted to change the color and bold it. So there we go. Ooh, that red hurts the eyes, so I'm going to control Z that. So that's how you can select data. You can do the entire spreadsheet, by the way. If you click up here in the very top left corner, if you click this area, it selects the entire spreadsheet. And now whatever you change will apply to every single piece of data in the entire spreadsheet. So that's how you can sort of navigate around and change the format of uh, of the numbers and the uh, and the and the letters. Just just you know changing the font or the size or making it look different. You can also easily change how data is positioned in a cell by using this one right here. So there's an alignment tab. <clears throat> for instance, this data for first name is all. In fact, I think just about all the data is aligned to the left, which means the Paul is starting at the far edge, and then we've got this blank space here. If I wanted to center this data, okay, that's when I'd use the alignment tab. So I'm just going to randomly grab this much data, and then if I go over here and I press center, now you'll notice all that data is centered inside the column. Okay, You can change the width of columns by going right between two columns, so between A and between B, and you'll see that you get a little uh, icon changes, then you can click and drag and you can make the A column bigger. And you notice the words are still right in the middle, right? And you can do the same thing with the B column if you want. You can drag it and make it much bigger. 
and your formatting still applies. It's still in the middle of the column. So that's how you make rows and, uh, or sorry, columns wider. You can do the same thing with rows. If you want to change the height of a row, you just go between two numbers. So between two and three, and I drag down, that's going to make this row, which is row two, really big. Okay, here, I'll do it on six as well. So I made row six really tall. Okay. Now, if I select all the data in that row, just by clicking somewhere in this six box here, and let's say I made it centered, and I also changed the top part here. This is, is it centered at the, or is it at the bottom of the cell, in the middle of the cell, or at the top of the cell? Well, if I pick the middle one, now you'll see that all of this data is in the middle vertically, okay? So everything from here to here is row six, and our data is right in the middle. You could also put the data at the top if you wanted by clicking this one here, that would be top aligned. So now the data is at the top. So you can pick top, middle, or bottom for any of these. I'm just gonna undo all those changes, get us back to where we were. You can change the width of multiple cells at the same time by selecting those columns or those rows and then changing the either the width or the height. And I'll show you how to do that here. Let's say that we wanna take columns E to T and make them all a bit wider because this data is too close together. Well, if I start, where did I say E? I'm going to click and I'm not going to let go. I'm going to click up here right on the E and I'm going to drag all the way over to the T and then let go. Now I've selected all the data in those columns all the way down to the bottom of our spreadsheet. All I need to do now is I need to go between any one of these columns, any two of these columns. So I'll go right between the J and the K. And if you click and drag and make it a bit wider, it's gonna make all of them the exact same width. So as long as you've got all those columns selected, you can change the width of all of them at once. And I just saw something happen there, which is actually something I wanna talk about. Whoops, that's a little too narrow. Um, I'm gonna change the width of rows A and B. So I'm selecting A, dragging over to B, letting go. And then I'm gonna click here between B and C, and I'm just gonna drag it smaller. And I wanna show you something. It cuts off your words. Now, it doesn't mean that it deleted those words. It just means that you can't see them because it's running into the next column. So if I click on this cell, you'll notice up here, the full name is still there. It just looks like it's been cut off, but if you make B bigger again, you'll notice it's, it's still there. Okay, now if you do that with numbers, you're gonna get some weird results. For instance, I'm gonna take column E and I'm gonna make it too short. So what happened here a little more. There we go. Now you see that the numbers have disappeared and I've got these hashtags. Okay. I think those are hashtags. And that can be a little confusing, but all it means is that there's numbers in here and the column is too narrow for the numbers. So you can't see the number. But if I click on any one of these cells, you'll notice up here, the data is still there. 537 is still there. You just can't see it because my column's too narrow. So if I bring my column back out again, if I make it a little bit wider, you'll notice all the numbers come back. So don't panic if you see the dollar or the uh, hashtags. It just means your column's too narrow. Now, if you get data and, for instance, all the columns are spaced weirdly, okay, and it's really tough to read, and you don't know, you know, you, you're having trouble tracking your data, and you want to make each of these columns just wide enough to fit the data, there's a handy way to do that too. So what you do is you just select all the columns, or in this case, you could just select the entire spreadsheet. I'll just select the columns. So I'm gonna select all the columns from A to T. If you double click between two of these columns, it'll make each of the columns just wide enough to fit the biggest piece of data. So I'm gonna double click, and you'll notice all the columns are different widths. And the reason for that is they're just big enough to fit the biggest piece of data. So this A column is just big enough for the longest name on the list. And I don't know what the long, longest name of the list is, but it's something that goes out to about here. And the same thing with last name, the same thing with team position and the rest. Okay, so just one more time, because I, I, I think that's a really handy feature of Excel. If you've got data that's either way too far spaced out, let's say that the data is like that, and you say, that's way too much room, and I, I don't want to have to scroll this way to get to all this data. Okay. The easiest way to fix that is just to select them all, double click between the columns, and then it'll make each column just wide enough to fit the data. And the, actually, the same thing goes with rows, too. For instance, if our rows, let's say their rows were way too high, like that, 
And I'm like, oh, this spreadsheet's already long enough. I don't want to have to scroll down for five minutes to get to the bottom. You can do the same thing with rows. You just go up here and you can either select all your rows by clicking and dragging. But again, there's so many of them. I'm just going to click up here in the top left to select everything on the spreadsheet. And now if I double click between any two of these rows, so I'll do one and two, it'll make all the rows just tall enough to fit all the data. So you wouldn't have your data cut off like that. Your data is going to be, your row is going to be just tall enough so that you can read Anthony Rizzo. So those, those are some pretty handy um, tricks for just sort of navigating your way around a spreadsheet and for, um, and for you know, changing the way that things look and uh, changing the way that uh, your, your, your words look and the changing the height and, uh, of your rows and the width of your columns and, and just doing things quickly instead of having to go, you know, sort of row by whoa, and I'm just going to make this one a little bigger and this one a little bigger and this one a little smaller. Um, you know, try to use the built-in tools to make, to make it more efficient. Formatting numbers. I did a quick number format before, and I'm going to show you how to do that again. Um, uh, we've got a whole bunch of statistical data here for baseball, and you could format your numbers in a bunch of different ways. Currently, you'll notice that this column here, the E column, AB, which is short for at-bats, um, doesn't have any decimals, nor do any of these up until you get over here, and then you've got these three columns with decimals, right? So you can change how any of the data in your columns looks with regard to numbers with this section right here, which I did use before. Let's say for whatever instant, uh, for whatever reason, I need two decimals in this particular column. All I need to do is I need to select the E column, so I'm going to click on the E, and then I go up to the number feature here, and right here is decimals. You can decrease the amount of decimals or you can increase the number of decimals. So if I decrease the number of decimals, watch what happens to 517. It changes. Oops. I wonder if you, because there's words, it's not working. I think it's because I've got uh, letters up here and numbers down here. So I might actually have to select some data. So I'm just gonna select some data right here just by clicking and dragging and let go. And then I'm going to try to, oh, there we go. Sorry, you can't decrease the decimal, but you can add decimals in. So there's 517.0, 000, 000, 000, And then that's so many decimals that it actually makes the column too wide, right? So I can go back. All right. So that is a bit unfortunate that you can't do it with this row right here. Like it would be much handier if you could select the entire row or the entire column, sorry, and then do the decimals, but I think it doesn't work just because that top row has a word uh, or a letter and then the rest of them are, are, are data. So there are some tricks and tips to get around that, but for now, um, just know that you can select any piece of data and you can change the number of decimal places and you can change the way the number looks. For instance, right here, we've got BA, it stands for batting average. If I just grab a couple of those numbers and I change the decimal place, watch what happens. I can send it this way, I can decrease the decimal and it just rounds the number. Okay, so decimal 307, if I lose a decimal place, it rounds it to 0.31. And then I'll do it another time and it rounds it again. Okay, and if you go the other way, it'll just add more decimals. So you can add more or less decimals. You can also change numbers so that they are percentages. So 0.307 is actually 30.7%. So if I change it to percent, I've got 31%. If I add more decimals, I've got 30.7%, and you can just keep adding or subtracting decimals. So I can make these percentages, okay, instead of just regular decimal numbers, okay, you can make them dollar figures, puts the dollar figure in, uh, uh, in front of it. Um, there's lots of options under dollars. You can make it, you know, different currencies. There's euros, if you're in the European Union, and here's, uh, you know, here's the pound symbol if you live in Britain, um, Chinese yen, things like that. Okay, I showed you percentage. Okay, you can have uh, commas if you've got really big numbers. So let's say I've got 10, what is that, 100,000. Okay, so now because I've hit the comma, it puts a comma in there to make it a little easier to read. You can remove the comma if you need to, but um, things like that. Remove my decimals again. There's all sorts of different options here. And um, these, are, you know, if, if you don't find what you want on this handy little tab here, if you just click in this drop down menu, there's ton, tons of them. It, you know, you can just make it a regular number, you can make it a general number, um, currency, accounting, dates, times, 
fractions, which is handy in math. And you can also make it text. Okay. So those are the basic formatting options in Excel for both words and for numbers. And I think that's enough information for you to complete the first of those Excel spreadsheets. And your next video is going to be a different concept within Excel. Make sure you email us if you have any questions or if something's not working.